contract he signed, National Secretary he signed, that they did not write their individual names, Senator Yocha Ayu and uh, Senator Samuel Ayahu. That is the only complaint. In other words, the complaint is that, oh, the letter has some defects. We don't know the name of the person who signed it as national chairman. That's the, what they filed in court, that the court should just set aside the PDP candidates because the letter that PDP wrote to INEC. Now, the question is, under which law do you have the right to come and complain about letter? This letter was not written to you. It was written to INEC. INEC knew who the national chairman and national secretaries are. INEC knew the people who signed the letter. INEC received the letter and was satisfied with the authenticity and validity of the letter and then acted upon it. You now come to court and say, uh, PDP's letter is bad. Please, because of that, disqualify their candidate. There is no law that supports it. Remember, remember, two five that PDP relied on in going to court, it made provision for a one political party to sue INEC if INEC has done anything wrong. So there you heard him. Uh, Osmo represented the PDP at the time, Uche Udena. This was when the APC had taken the PDP to court and he was just opposing uh, both uh, judgments and reasons for why the justice had uh, made, uh, give the judgments that he gave at the time where the APC's case was ruled out, saying it was, in fact, if I was to tell you correctly what was said then by um, Justice um, um, Obile, he said that the APC had filed um, uh, yeah, the, the, the case was status barred. The complaint was status barred and it filed to suit five days after the stipulated 14 days from the day of the action. Then the judge went further to rule out the APC and said they failed to establish any reasonable cause of action. He also refused to go into the merit of the suit at the time and insisted that no political party has the right to sue another political party as provided by the electoral act, the electoral laws. When I spoke with the lawyer, I asked him this particular question. So what changed? And he said, the PDP did not sue APC. The amended parts of the constitution allows for a political party to question INEC. And the PDP was questioning INEC and took INEC to court. And what that means is anybody who's involved in that case would have to be involved in the matter perhaps the same thing was applied with the apc when it took the pdp to court it looked at that provision of the law and was questioning INEC to say you should not be um, accepting this because this document wasn't signed however INEC felt maybe comfortable we don't know uh, but that's the picture and that's the explanation from the law would also try to get to hear from the lawyer who represented the apc at the time to find out um from him what he thinks and how he views it from the eyes of the law in the meantime we're still awaiting our guest as eli uh to join us live in the studio to have this conversation but i open the phone lines now and need you to tell me should the APC be worried in River State ahead of the election following the um, High Court judgment that has qualified the governorship candidate of the APC, Tony Call. The number to call is 070-0923-0923. Remember, we're also live on Facebook and on Twitter, so you can be a part of it. 070-0923-0923. That is the number to call. Remember, go straight to the point and please be civil. Good morning, Nigeria Info. Uh, sadly, we lost that call now. Um, Nigeria Info, good morning. Hello, good morning. M Mr. Morning to you. Yes, my name is Comrade Letan Barry from the Valley from Bori. Go on. Yes. Should the APC be worried? From yes. APC should be worried because the level of litigation against them in the state is becoming alarming and with the situation of things based on the fact that they've gotten a lot of issues disobeying court order previous years ago by their godfather Amechi, 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 they have to be worried because the court will not be silent against their previous act against them that is number one two the one that uh, PDP, uh, APC took uh, PDP to court, definitely it calls for questioning. When a letter is being signed and the name is not 
added to it. You know, this has to do with national and state. The national chairman has to come and testify that this uh, signature or name signed or whatever that is signed, it was done by me. Because people can put someone's sig uh, signature in the name of saying that it was the national chairman that signed. The national chairman should come and witness it and say, yes, it was my signature. I signed it without my name. Because the name is not included. It calls your questioning. So, everything has, I think, uh, uh, if I may finally say, everything is buried and buried in river state. All right. Let Ambari, that's your position. Thank you very much. Uh, it's what you think, but I'm pretty sure that by, that's not what the APC thinks. Nigeria Info, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Andrew. You're welcome, JJ. Uh, is that JJ, yeah, if I'm you. correct? Thank you very much. Okay, go on. <laughs> I think, uh, like uh, the judge said in the matter between uh, APC and PDP, he said, one, that is fine out of time. You know, it's status bound. I also remember when he was told that he filed a case against the PDP, that is his own party now, national, he said no, that I am a lawyer in life venture and I know the law very well, that I cannot file the matter out of time. That's somebody that knows the law. Unlike uh, the other one that just uh, studied law right now, we saw pictures everywhere. So what I'm trying to say in essence is this. I think uh, the APC need to put their house in order. Again, you cannot keep doing one thing over and over and think you'll get a different result. It's garbage in garbage. Now, think of it. Why they didn't even inform INEC in the first place is the fear of the Magnus Group. They collected money for forms from them. On the day they are supposed to give them forms, they didn't give them forms, so they protested. That was the same day they did their, what they call the World Congresses and all those stuff put together. They didn't inform INEC the venue. Because they think that if they inform INEC the venue where they want to do this course of, that INEC will inform the other people. So that's how they got their hand burnt at the end of the day. But for me, I'm not pity them because you can't keep doing one thing over and over and for changing people and think you'll get a good result. Okay. Thank All right, JJ, thank you very much. Uh, my guest is with me in the studio, Sabaya Eli. You're welcome. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Nigeria. Um, thank you for having me. Well, I really don't have a lot of time in the next couple of minutes. We'll go for a short commercial. But first, let's hear from you uh, the shocking news that came out yesterday to many. The disqualification of the governorship candidate of your party. Um, how is that be? How, what's the party doing now? And what's the, what's the perspective to that judgment? Well, the first thing we must do, as every reasonable person does, is to file appeal proceedings. Hmm. So that's, that's ongoing. Um, that's be the first thing to do. Uh, second thing is to react to the judgment otherwise. So all of the comments you hear on radio everywhere are uh, Nigerians simply expressing that's what they call the court of public opinion mm. where people like JJ operates without certification and they can even make statements that are sub recklessly. So but what we have done is um, take this as, if you like, called mixed feelings. Surprise in the sense that a clear provision of the law was misinterpreted by the law, the Justice uh, E.O. Billy of the Federal Court. Not surprised in the sense that we expected it. I know that's the what, danger. What was, what was misinterpreted exactly? Uh, if, you, if you read section 182, sub 1, paragraph A of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of 1999, mm -hmm. it is written in, in English language, black and white. That's a grounds for disqualifying somebody who is contested as the governor of the state and subjects him to Section 28 of the Constitution, providing for an exemption to a case of dual citizenship. If we go to Section 25 of the same Constitution, it defines who is a Nigerian citizen and says so of all Nigerian by birth. You could be a Nigerian by birth, born of Nigerian parents outside this country. Or Nigerian by birth, born of Nigerian parents inside this country. Hmm. But the bottom line is that you're born of Nigerian parents. Now, that fellow is not the same as a fellow who is a Nigerian under 26, 27, dealing with nationalization or registration. So, when people read or misconstrue section 182, sub 1A, 
which says that it is subject to 28. And you see the clear provision of 28, and yet you arrive at that judgment, for God's sake. You know? So that's why, for us, it was shocking. But it's not shocking because we expected it. It appears as though a part has been established here. Mm. Uh, you have one court, one law, different interpretations. But the good news is this. If you go through the media, we lost an opportunity in Taraba State, in Adamawa State, and one other state, going by the judgments of federal courts in those states. But only yesterday, the people court set aside those judgments in both states. Ordinarily, ordinarily, you would say APC had already lost those states. So something's wrong, and we need to interrogate those issues. Okay. Yes. Uh, we have a short commercial coming up. We'll go for that now. But when we return, uh, we'll certify whether or not, again, your candidate is indeed a UK citizen because there were talks of a document he signed saying he's now a citizen of the UK that was submitted to INEC. And secondly, on the grounds that the primaries that were conducted were not properly done according to electoral laws, we're also going to verify all of those. And we get to hear from a lawyer who was involved in those matters time both matters when your party took the pdp to court and now that the pdp took your party to court uh we'll get to hear their opinion and what they, they thought about uh, uh what the law says concerning the situation my name is Thiemi andrew we'll be right back sending your messages on whatsapp and on social media stay tuned
Hey, Chair, we're asking you a question on socials, and it's very huge. Should the APC be concerned after the judgment yesterday? Well, some people already public saying 2019 could be repeated. Whether that is possible or not, we'll get to find out. My guest in the studio is the spokesperson for the Governorship Campaign Council of the Party in River State, Sobaya Eli. is also a lawyer. And, um, well, we'll be addressing some of the issues that has been raised with regards to that judgment that came yesterday. Um, Mr. Eli, so two things I said I was going to clarify from you on the ground that the judgment was made. The first was the fact that your candidate is, not a citizen, is a citizen of the UK. The second was that your primaries were not properly conducted. That's for the most recent case. The one where you took the um, PDP to court on the grounds that certain documents were signed without names written on it. The argument was that, well, the letter was not written to you. It was written to INEC. So INEC would be the one to make complaints or say whether or not they do not know these people. And uh, secondly, the matter was thrown out because uh, the judge at the time said that uh, Justice um, Obile had said that you cannot interfere in the affairs of another political party so what's your position well uh, i was tongue-tied out, out of sheer shock i'll, I'll be from the last question or the latter part of the question mm -hmm. the same issue that we conversed before my lord just to billy that it came to the finding that we are not allowed by law to do so because we're interfering with the PDP nomination of a candidate internal affairs party as it were. The same issue was conversed by Morgan Tom West, who contested that same governorship primary with the same member of the PDP, which the Electoral Act 2022 allows. Why are the same issues of his candidature were questioned? Membership of the party were questioned. Mm. What what did the judge arrive at? The same judge. So leave a piece aside. A party member who contested for that election against Sinfobra, Morgan West, raised those same questions before that same judge. What was the final of the judge? The suit was dismissed as incompetent. So here we are. Now move forward. We don't want to come here to like um, play to the gallery. As a lawyer, minded to be very careful so that I don't allow my emotions to run riot. But it's becoming a shame the law that we are taught is is read upside down. And of course, the the the, the, the symbol of justice is a Greek goddess called Hermes. You find that as symbol in every legal institution, right? She is clothed in some apparel about her eyes are blindfolded. She has a sword on the right hand. And the scale and of balance. The scale of balance on the left. The scales of justice. She doesn't know who called her. The scales, the weights on the scales. As the scales steals, she strikes with the sword. That is justice. That is justice. I want to judge the horrible justice. You are simply putting the place of Hermes, the Greek goddess of justice. But what do you see? It appears as though these days, it depends on which litigant is before the court. Some judges, and I said with respect, a lot of them were eminent jurists who would never touch these things the temple. But so many out there who are spoiling the garments of justice, polluting the clean streams of justice. What do you now, think? Now, let me say this so I don't lose track. A judge is minded to the law. It's only the facts of a matter. The law is in the bosom of the courts as the judge. The facts are with the litigants. So, in applying the law to the facts, same facts, same law, two different interpretations. So, leave the piece out of it. I have cited Morgan Tom West, who is empowered by the Electoral Act 2022 to challenge same for brass candidature. The same judge that dismissed the piece application as an intrusion in the town of every party. That so back here, I move away from that to address the issue of Toya Cole's candidature. But before I do that, let me answer the other one about about um, interfering about, about INEC not yes. monitoring elections. 
Again, I would be careful not to say something because matter subject is. Yesterday, an appeal was heard on the judgment that disqualified APC candidates, all of them, on same grounds. That the judge Ariolu case. No, not judge, Ariolu, judge Olu. Oh, judge Olu, yes. yes. Judge Olu and four the others. Appeal was had yesterday. Arguments have been canvassed on both sides. Appellants, respondents, and the judge, the court had adjourned for judgment. The date we communicated to parties. That issue was canvassed. And it also appealed against that judgment. That suggests something to you. The same INEC that's alleged by some political commentators, alright, not informed, as not monitoring the election. INEC appealed against that judgment. So we'll leave it for the courts to determine that when the judgment comes. Mm. Let me also not go further to the take Now, suffice to say that the constitution is our guide here, which is the organic law of the land, what they call the the the, the, the national ombudsman. Alright? Now, if you go to section 182 dealing with qualification or disqualification rather for office of governor, the question reads section 182 Subsection 1, paragraph A provides that no person shall be qualified for election to the office of governor of a state if it's conditional, if subject to the provisions of section 28 of this constitution, he has voluntarily acquired the citizenship of a country other than Nigeria. Or, except in such cases, to be prescribed to such other country. So the question is, if you are fighting to call on these grounds, what is Section 28 saying? Simple. Section 28 that goes further to say, subject to other provisions of this constitution, other provisions, a person shall forfeit his Nigerian citizenship. A person shall forfeit is Nigerian citizenship if it get conditional. Not being a citizen of Nigeria by birth. If not being a citizen of Nigeria by birth. In other words, you're saying if you're a Nigerian citizen by birth, birth no, you me, can never no, let forfeit let, that. Let me land. Let me just land on that scene. Just take it easy. Subject to the other provisions of this section, it's dealing with dual citizenship, that section. Mm -hmm. A person shall forfeit, forthwith, his Nigerian citizenship if not being a citizen of Nigeria by birth, he acquires or retains the citizenship or nationality of a country other than Nigeria of which he is not a citizen by birth. So, Toyoko was born in Port Nigeria in January 1967 of Nigerian parents. Qualifies as a citizen as captured by the same constitution in section 25. A full Nigerian citizen. So, how does section 20 apply to him if he applies to be a citizen of the uk so if i understand clearly it means whether he applied to be a citizen of the uk or not would have no, hold no grounds because Absol originally he was a nigerian. citizen of nigeria so it would only work if he wasn't a in citizen nigeria. of nigeria by birth yes and then applies it came to be by, it came by nationalization okay right, or by registration which is i, I, I want to quickly i want to quickly play you something that was said by the uh, lawyer who represented the pdp in the case yes um at the time Udena. Uh, this was what he said, and then perhaps you listen to it, and then we could, you can tell us what you think is not appropriate about um, his interpretation of what the law says. It's the same thing in the case of uh, Cole that uh, they're talking about now. In Cole's case, he filled out a form and submitted to INEC, where he stated that, look, I have a voluntary acquired citizenship of the United Kingdom, and I have sworn my allegiance to the United Kingdom. Now, we went to court to say, look, INEC, how can you see that in his form? And still include him when you are aware of section two of the constitution, which prohibits disqualifies any person who is in that position. And then I next turn the blind eye, say leave it, forget. We say we go to court. Then we went to court and presented this matter. The court looked at you. Of course, you cannot say we don't have a right to complain about a wrong done. These are clear wrongs. The APC didn't have a wrong to complain about. All right. The other one is, uh, well, yes, if you have any other issues. No, I, I, the explanations are so far. You've gotten it clear now. So this is a function of individual cases. The error they committed in their own 
Look at the case that the judge said they did not establish locus. They merely said the letter is bad. They didn't even inform the court that, look, we are contesting that election. We have candidates in that election. That is how it is affecting us, the letter these people have written. Okay. We heard him. That's Udena. Uh, Uche Udena, uh, the lawyer for the PDP, was speaking there. His interpretation of the matter, and when you look at it now, so if what you're saying and what we've heard from the Constitution stands, why then was that not seen by the judge if originally from the Constitution, uh, Subsection 28 had said that, well, Tony Cole is an Nigerian by birth, so regardless of whether he swears allegiance to another country, um, he still would remain a Nigerian. Well, with respect to our proceeding, since it's still ongoing, mm. I would just say my colleague Udena was was misdirected. I, I have seen a lot of a lot of ignorance at play here. I've had people say Tony Cole is not a graduate. Yet the same people, if you look at this INEC, the papers they filed at INEC, mm. there's a certificate, a degree of the University of Lagos. Certifying that he has a Bachelor of Architecture, Bachelor of Environment, Environmental Sciences. Yet he hear political mischief makers say he wasn't a graduate. Alright? Because maybe in 2019, he did not file uh, his degree papers, he just put school out or whatever. Mischief. Now, I will simply say this. The law has moved away from the era of technical justice. Since the days of the late Honorable Justice Chukudifu put of blessed memory. Antonio Nagolu carried their short, a great jurist that gave Nigeria absolute reason to be proud anywhere in the world, as far as common law practice is concerned. Now we have gone to the era of substantial justice, where the court does not depend on frivolities. Oh, they did not mention that uh, they are contesting this election. They only cited the letter. What does that mean? The court must do substantial justice. If you read any writ, even if it's an original summons, that the lawyer files in court, you're going to find somewhere, the last paragraph is always called the omnibus prayer, in the relief sort, where the lawyer will say, and for such further order or orders, as this honorable court may deem fit to make, in the circumstance of this case. What that means is that, even though some lawyers will tell you, well, he didn't ask for this, the court said for the Christmas, they forget there's a no minibus prayer where the litigant submits to the court the absolute right to make such further orders as the court may think fit or think fit in the circumstance of that case. So, for instance, a Rotary Major approaches a federal high court mm -hmm. alleging unlawful substitution in 2006 mm -hmm. by the PDP with Omeya, Celeste Omeya is cousin. The matter travels all the way. To the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court, a full bench of Supreme Court. But Judge Ogunta the JSC as it then was. Us, I mentioned my son in to office. And people complain. He didn't ask for it. The court gave it to him. Come on. There's no minibus prayer in that relief sort. Hmm. Two, the Supreme Court has disciplinary jurisdiction. He recalled that similar facts evidence works in law. Alright? And the court is bound by it. Now, if I and Rame ran for the PDP ticket in 2007 like a Michigan University, the cases were running pari pari side by side. Somehow, a Michigan case was trapped at a appeal court. I will not tell you why it was trapped, I don't know why. But the world knows why. Now, Arame's case traveled to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court determined the matter in good time before the election of February 2007. What did the PDP do? The powers that be were bent on stopping Amechi and Arame. Descend on an anime by going to a deal with with the PPA candidate. What's his name now? Ikeda Hakim. Mm. And got him to win the election on the grounds that when he wins, he will cross over to the PDP. And that's what happened. Just well, but this were done. This were not this, this is information that we we've not seen publicly. No, no, no. Space. I'm just saying that this is the reason why and we cannot, no, we cannot why, this this say this is why the PDP did not the Supreme Court probably did not want to subject Amechi to the same In your Supreme. opinion. Yes, because when the court when it when they disobey the courts by actions, the court has a way of coming back at you. Okay? But people have always injured the fact that Amechi did not ask that he should be they forgot that the same court did not punish those. Who are lawfully excluded him. So are you saying this is what the punishment is what we're seeing now? No, listen, it's not punishment. I'm simply saying that 
a law will say it be used, it be remedium. Whatever they say wrong, there must be a remedy. These lawyers here will then and co will interpret what they know. She waits. Now, the same courts on this issue mm. that they were citing, all right, has said so. Let me tell it. Apart from quoting that law for you, let me show you an interpretation as far back as 2004 in the case of Willie Ogebide against, um, uh, what was it now? Uh, Sula, Adigbo Sula. Well, Unkanu Silvanus Onogen, who later became the Chief Justice of Nigeria, sitting as a Justice of a Court of Appeal, said this, interpreted that law. He said, it is clear, and I hereby hold, that the acquisition of dual citizenship by a Nigerian, per se, is not a ground for disqualification for election. In that case, to the National Assembly. Particularly, where the citizen, Nigerian citizen, is a citizen by birth. That is the clear meaning of the provisions of section 66 1 and 28, 999 Constitution. When you take it together, 66 1 is talking about qualification for National Assembly, mm. not for governor. But said so that's the clear meaning when they take it together with section 28. So a court higher than the federal court had already pronounced on this in 2004. The same authority was cited with approval in another case, Labour Party against Ishola in 2014. Yeah. But ti other cases. Ti time will not allow us. Uh, I wish we had a lot of time. Unfortunately, um, time will not allow us. Um, for those who called in earlier on the show and all the messages we took, thank you very much. Um, it's been a very exciting conversation. Next week, I'm pretty sure we're going to I, visit I just, again. I just, add one thing, just one thing, sorry. Ten seconds. Yes. You know, all of this, as I tell the party members, don't be worried. In 2020, against the spirit of this APC Constitution, which provides Article 14, Sub 3, and Paragraph 7, Paragraph 6, rather, Two National seconds. Home Committee shall. Thank have you, Sir Eli. No committee. time. We have to go. Hello, Patakot. Next. <laughs>